Jack Benny with Don Bester and his orchestra. And the orchestra opens the program with Sunny Disposition. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the world's greatest assistant comedian, Mr. Jack Benny. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Hello, everybody. <laughs> How's that, Wilson? Oh, gee, that's a different start, Jack. Hello, everybody. Yes, sir. It came right out of my head, just like that. Oh, uh, go on. I saw you mark that down on your cuff eight days ago. Yeah, that's what I mean. It came right off my cuff. You know, Don, in my two years and a half on the air, this is the earliest I've ever been on. But it's really dinner time around the country. Do you know how many people are sitting at their tables right now listening to me and eating Jello? Imagine how many people are not listening to you and eating Jello. Quiet, Wilson. <laughs> Quite. You're giving our new sponsors a thought. You know? <laughs> but listen, Don, before we go any further on this program, we've got to have an understanding. Well, what is it? Then? Now, get this. There's to be no advertising on this program during our sketches or while we're telling jokes. Remember that. Don't keep coming in with the commercial every minute. Well, how do you mean, Jack? Well, if I should happen to mention Los Angeles, California, don't you butt in and say Los Angelo. <laughs> You see, it, it doesn't fit here. Oh, I see, Jack. I'll, I'll only mention it in natural places. Yes. And say, Wilson, we're just starting on this program. I notice you already have some of our new product on your necktie. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you see, Jack, I, I bought six different colored neckties to match the six flavors of Jell-O. I know, but you got strawberry flavor on an orange tie. You know? All right, Jack. All right. Go ahead with the program. Come in. Good evening, Mr. Benny. Mary Livingston is my name. Well, hello. Hello, Mary. I'm glad you got here kind of early this evening. After all, it's a new program. We want to be on our toes. Have you got any good jokes for tonight? Well, I should hope to smoke a herring. Oh. I made up a good joke about blowout proof and the silent safety tread. Mary, you should have made that up two weeks ago. It's too late now. Well, it takes time, but I certainly get them. <laughs> I'll bet you just found out who won the World Series. Oh, has that started already? Come on, will you give us a joke or a riddle? Here we are in a new program, and I'm stuck without a joke. Huh? All right, here's one. Now listen. Mm -hmm. It's not my sister, it's not my brother, still it's the offspring of my father and mother. Who is it? I don't know. Who is it? It's me, but if you tell a joke, it's you. Say, that's unnatural. Listen. Look, make believe, make believe it's mine, Mary, and I'll tell it to Wilson. Hey, say, Wilson. Uh, yes, Jack. It's not your sister, it's not your brother, still it's the offspring of your father and mother. Who is it? I haven't got a sister, Jack. But it's only a joke, Don. Well, it know? might be a joke to you, but I wish I had a sister. Oh, well, what's the use? Uh, what what's the matter, fellas? Oh, hello, Parker. <laughs> uh, come here, Frank. Frank, you have a sense of humor. It's not your sister, it's not your brother, still it's the offspring of your father and mother. Who is it? I don't know. I haven't been home in months. <laughs> well, we're certainly starting out fine. Listen, Parker, this is a new program. Have you got any jokes of your own? Well, I should hope to smuggle a Chinaman. Smoke a herring, smuggle a Chinaman. All right, let's hear it. Well, what is it that has four legs and flies? That ought to be good. What is it that has four legs and flies? A fox terrier. That has four legs and fleas. That's right. That's right. Uh, say, fleas, flies, as long as he's healthy. Oh. <laughs> well, hello, Jack. It's Don Bester, folks, a musician, but a gentleman nevertheless. <laughs> say, Bester, it's not your father and not your mother. Then why worry about it? Say, Bester, listen, I'm having so much trouble on this series already. Have you got a new joke for this program? I should hope to kiss an oyster. And I wish you people would stop quoting Shakespeare. Oh, you're jealous because we know so much. I'm not jealous. He is Jell-O's, and that reminds me of Jell-O's extra rich fruit flavor. A new exclusive process of flavor right into a tiny crystal. Say best of <laughs> flavor. A favor. What is it, Jack? Play, Don. The same old trouble. Thank heaven. <laughs> was Cool and Crazy Rhythm, played by Don Bester and his Yellow Tears. And now, for this program, we are going to inaugurate a series of guest stars and try to have one or two for you on each of our future broadcasts. 
In fact, we have, already, we have already arranged for several distinguished artists who have laid off successfully from stage, screen, and radio. And tonight we have a trio that comes to you direct from the Palace Theater, New York, where they saw the show from the balcony and liked it. <laughs> so I now take great pleasure in introducing to you the three chicken sisters from New Orleans. Hello, Hello Mr. Mr. Benny. And uh, by the way, uh, weren't you girls on one of my programs before? Yes, but we changed our names. We ain't the chicken sisters anymore. Well, that's a very good idea, particularly in show business. Uh, what do you call yourselves now? The Dean Sisters. The Dean Sisters. That's a nice name. The Dean Sisters. Which one are you? I'm Dizzy. She's Daffy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dizzy and Daffy. And you, little girl, on the end there, what's your name? Nutsy. Hmm. <laughs> Dizzy, Daffy, and Nutsy Dean. Are you the uh, only three girls in your family? No, we have a sister at home. Another sister, huh? What's her name? Gunga. Oh, Gunga Dean, I see. <laughs> Gunga Dean, huh? Yes, and she's a better girl than we are. Who? Gunga, Gunga Dean. <laughs> that was Gunga Dean, folks, by the three Dean sisters. Huh? Well, tell me, uh, have you girls ever been on the air before? Yes, we flew here from New Orleans. Oh, you see, I see. You you flew here by airplane, huh? No, we're three old crows and took advantage of it. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that certainly takes the worry off my mind. All right now, girls, uh, what songs do you know? Huh? Anything at all. What would you like to hear? Well, I'd like to have you sing uh, Two Cigarettes in the Dark. We'd rather sing it with the lights on. Oh. <laughs> you know, we're not as dumb as we look. We couldn't be. <laughs> well, you've got to sing something. Um, do you like uh, cocktails for two? Yes, but there's three of us. Well, all right, girls, sing anything you want, but get together and do the best you can. Remember, this might mean a contract for you, but you can bet me it won't. <laughs> I haven't lost a bet in ten years. <laughs> now, what are you going to sing? A Hill Tilly song. Hill Tilly? You mean Hill Billy? Oh, I see. You happen to be girls. I see. Well, let's hear it. Did you give Mr. Bester your music? Yes, sir. All right, Don. Give them an introduction. It ought to be very good, I think. We can... Wow! Well, all I can say is that was great, girls. Did you like it? I certainly did. I'm a sucker for talent. Well, what do you think we ought to do? Just keep rolling down the mountain. Just keep rolling down the mountain. Just keep rolling down until you break your neck. Wow, wow, wow. Girls, look, make believe there's a fire here and run to the nearest exit. Thank you. Play, Don, will you? <laughs> And now Frank Parker, a hall billy, will make amends by singing, uh, what would you like to sing, Frank? Oh, I don't care. Anything you want, Jack. Well, how do you like tea for two? That was Frank Parker, who double-crossed us and sang Smoke Gets in Your Eyes from Roberta. And now tonight, folks, for our feature attraction, we are going to do something really educational, away from the usual line of hokum. Of course, by now, you know what program this is. We are connected with a product sold by thousands and thousands of grocers. And tonight, we will attempt to show these grocery men how to stimulate business and, of course, help this program. So we'll present to you a scene from the J. Benny Grocery Store. Wilson, yeah. will you take it while I put on my white apron? <laughs> the J. Benny Grocery Store is located in a little town in New Hampshire. The time is 6 a.m. The proprietor is just arriving and finds Mary, his chief clerk, getting ready for the day's work. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Fire Benny. Stop using that bottle of ketchup for lipstick. <laughs> what are you doing there, Mary? I'm fixing up the delicatessen counter. No matter how you arrange it, it's still baloney. Answer the phone, Mary, and cut out the dialect. Hello? Yes? Yes? Who is it? Mrs. Blinsa. Oh. She wants some split peas. Tell her we're not splitting any today. She'll take them whole or nothing. We can't split peas. Goodbye. Ah, oh, good morning, Mrs. Borsmeyer. What will it be this morning? I want a dozen eggs. What kind of eggs? We have some for 50 cents, some for 30, and some for 20. Well, how are the 20-cent ones? Rotten. Mary. 
Well, what's the difference between the 30-cent eggs and the 50-cent ones? Well, they look alike, but I can show you the difference. We have the two hens here that laid those eggs. Not the chicken sisters. No, the hens, the hens. Now here, here's the hen that laid the 30-cent eggs. Say something, hen. And here's the hen that laid the 50-cent eggs. That's what you're paying for, madam. Well, I don't like that either. I'll take the 20-cent eggs. It's too late. There's chickens now. Then give me a pound of chicken. All right. Anything else? I'll look around the store and see. Hello, stranger. What do you have? Well, I don't know what I want, but I don't like spinach. Oh, well, Deb Parker, I didn't recognize you. How's the rheumatism in your leg? Well, it's in my shoulder now. Leg, shoulder, as long as you're healthy. Well, Zeb, what'll it be this morning? Uh, I think I'll take some cheese. What kind? Oh, I like any kind of cheese. I guess it's the rat in me. Well, here's some nice Swiss cheese. Yes, I'll take half a pound. All right, that'll be 25 cents. Hey, it's marked 20 cents. I know, but there's a nickel deposit on the hold. When you return the hold, you get a nickel back. <laughs> yes, if I don't get it by a cracker, you'll be full of holes. Jack, you must be wearing Swiss socks. They're full of holes, too. Yes, ma'am, what'll it be today? I want some spice. Spice? Not on this program. We have to be careful. <laughs> well, then give me a pound of rice. A pound of rice? Yes, and send it, please. Yes, ma'am, what's the name? Goldberg. Mark that down, Mary. I've got it. Rice for the Goldberg. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Any other program? That'll be all for today. Oh, hello, Mrs. Borschmeyer. How are you, Mrs. Goldberg? How's your husband? Fine, thank you. Oh, well, thank you. Well, Jay, I've got to run along now. So long. Sure, there's nothing else you want, Zeb. Oh, yes. I'd like to get some squash. We're all out of squash, Zeb. We got some nice pumpkins. What? Pumpkins. I don't get that. Pumpkins, pumpkins. What do you have for Thanksgiving dinner? My relatives, they drive me nuts. <laughs> I like the O'Hare joke better. <laughs> Mary, wait on that customer, will you? <clears throat> what do you have, miss? I'd like to see some prunes. Jack, there's a lady here who wants to see you and Parker. <laughs> no, not those prunes. Well, here are some nice prunes, madam, right in this box here. Oh, those are old and wrinkled. Haven't you got any new prunes? No, but we have these cleaned and pressed. How many do you want? <laughs> oh, about three. I'm trimming my hat. Mary, you better take her. It's out of my line. <laughs> You'll have to wait for the prunes, madam. Anything else? Let me see. How about a head of lettuce? I've got one. You're telling me. <laughs> Mary. Well, never mind. Give me some barley and carrots. I'll make clam chowder. How about some clams? No, I don't want to spoil it. Hello, Mrs. Smith. Well, well, Mrs. Borsmeyer and Mrs. Goldberg, how are you? Fine, thank you. Oh, do you women know each other? Do we? We came, we came rolling down the mountain. We came rolling down the mountain. Get me circles, seven, eight, three hundred. Oh, Hello, Bester. Play, Don. from the motion picture, The Gay Divorcee, played by Zeke Bester in the backyard. Throw him a coin, Mary. Throw him a coin. Well, Squire, we certainly had a busy morning. Yep. Oh, by the way, has that Zeke Bester paid his bill yet? No, he hasn't paid since 1914. Well, if he keeps that up, we'll have to stop his credit. <laughs> Here comes Zeke now. Hello, Zeke. How are you, Jay? Pretty good for Bester, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> There's a pretty good room there. How's crop? Very bad. Farmer's suffering from the drought. Ain't had no water in weeks. I think his neck is suffering, too. What are you talking about, Zeke? It rained all last week. <laughs> what good did that do me? I was out of town. <laughs> oh, yes, you're in Philadelphia this week at the Earl Theater, aren't you? <laughs> hmm, what do you have, Mrs. Anchovy? I want a raisin cake and be sure they're raisins. <laughs> <laughs> Why? What was the matter with that raisin cake? I told you yesterday. I opened it and four and twenty blackbirds flew out. <laughs> Here's your cake, Mrs. Anchovy. Anything else? Let me see. Oh, yes, I want some dog biscuits. Shall I send them or will you eat them here? <gasps> Why, the idea. That's an insult. In my eyes, my Da, 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 well, hello there. Hello, Lim. 
Sam is the name, S A M. Oh. <laughs> How are you, Miss Levinsky? That's Livingston, Livingston. Well, pardon my southern accent. <laughs> Well, Sam, what's new? Nothing special. <laughs> I was just sitting around home listening to the radio, and did I hear a funny joke? Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. What was it? What was a the joke? A girl says to a fella, it's not your sister, it's not your uncle, still it's a cousin of your mother and father. What is it? I don't know. What is it? Four legs and flies. <laughs> I don't see the point. What are you laughing at? It's a habit I got when I hear a joke. What a joke. All right, Sam, what do you have today? Now, let me see. Have you got any ham? Ham, yes. Keep it. Mm. <laughs> hey, uh, I want a herring, and it shouldn't smell from herring. Mary, get him a herring. It shouldn't smell from herring. <laughs> I'll put some Christmas night on it. Here you are. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. This herring is very bad. He looks like he didn't sleep all night. <laughs> He stays up and watches the store. <laughs> well, uh, give me one that ain't working. <laughs> give him the herring for nothing, Jack, or we'll have to open a window. Never mind. I think I'll have some of that smoked salmon over there. That's not smoked salmon. That's ham. You have the education. I'm hungry. <laughs> Mary. Mary, wrap it up for him. That'll be 40 cents. Charge it. Where do you live? Likewise. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Sam. Hello, Yank. Oh, hello, Mr. Olson. What do you have? My wife sent me to buy some yellow. Some what? Yellow. I'm afraid of this customer. Yellow what? We have yellow lemons, yellow bananas. No, you're plain yellow. Y-E-L-L-O. Oh, you mean jello. That's what I've been told you, yellow. Those Italians kill me. <laughs> Here you are, Mr. Olson. Well, I take you go home now. Well, goodbye, Jack. Goodbye, Sam. <laughs> well, Mary, clean up the counters. We might as well go close up the store. Yes, Jack, I wish you would. I have a date in Jersey City. That's Jersey City, huh? You have the education. I've got the date. Well, play, Don, play. For The Wire, and congratulations on your new show. You know, folks, Lanny is starring in the Log Cabin Inn every Wednesday night. Look it up in your local newspaper and tune in next Wednesday. It's a grand program. Of the new series. And, Wilson, if you run into Lanny Ross, thank him on behalf of all of us. Come on, Mary, let's go. Oh, Jack, what program are we on now? Jello. Oh, I never can find out anything from you. Good night, folks. Good night.